What you don't know can hurt you, and what you do know can set you free. That's why we interview subject matter experts for your small to medium-sized business and personal finances. Because knowledge is power, but experience is everything. Welcome to The Tipping Point. The Tipping Point is brought to you in part by Tehrani and Velez LLP, your tax and accounting subject matter experts. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm your host, Gabriel Velez. Our guest today is Arash Gotsinat, uh, CEO at ABC Computech. Uh, he, it's a managed IT services firm. The mission of ABC Computech is to provide clients with solutions through their spectrum of consulting, managing, and outsourcing services. Among other things, they are highly skilled in IT security, cloud computing, server and virtualization, sales management, leadership, and team management. Welcome, Arash. Hey, thank you so thanks much. Thanks for being on today. How, how's the uh, day going? Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Gabe. Thanks for having me. It was beautiful. Today's Friday. I think every day is Friday. Every day is supposed to be Friday. I thank God it's that. Friday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but Friday is a little better than the other days. Yeah. Nice. Nice, nice. So th thanks for coming on today. Um, you know, there is a an umbrella term, which is IT, information technology, and that encompasses a lot of things, uh, your, your infrastructure, security, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Sure. So uh, today, we're, we're going to talk about a few different things, but um, I just want to start off by asking you, you know, what are the challenges that small to medium-sized businesses face, face when it comes to their technology, their infrastructure, and security? Very good question. Um, it's, a, it's a very wild, wide area, as you mentioned. Um, uh, the thing is, small and medium uh, companies, first of all, they have a budget. Everyone puts some budget for their IT and their, their information technology. That's very important. But they have to look at it in a different way. Nowadays, no matter what, you need uh, email, you need technology, you need to save your files somewhere, and you need voice over IP phones, the, the new things. And if you don't think about it in advance, in the long term, you're going to have some problem. So it's very important to, to change the view and change the, the uh, perception about what they have and what they can do to make it better for the small companies. And then they can put some budget for that. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So a allocating um, resources for I IT, um, an IT investment. Yeah. I don't think that there's a, a business around today, definitely not so someone new and trying to scale that can do it without technology and without a computer. That's exactly right. But there are many businesses right now that they think they can handle everything. They think IT is just, oh, it's simple. I'm going to turn off the computer, turn it on. It's a lot more than that. It's a lot more than that. As you said, there's security involved. Security, we have many things on it, backups, servers, if they don't have server, even some people use Google Drive, Dropbox, those things, yeah. you need to manage it properly. Yeah, even if I have everything in the cloud. Yeah, I, even if you have everything still... in the cloud, what, what does cloud mean? Uh, to make it a little clearer, cloud is like your server, but instead of you host it, someone else hosts it. For you. Right. So once they host it, you still have to manage it properly. They don't manage it for you, they just give you the space. Okay. So uh, you still need, for example, you have Dropbox. Dropbox is cloud. It's like some. It's like a storage. But what if you just replace one file in Dropbox and you don't have a backup? What, do you, what is your sec What is your backup plan? What is your security? What if you get the ransomware? We're going to talk about it uh, later. But what if you get ransomware and it goes to your Dropbox and you cannot retrieve it? Mm -hmm. um, that's why you have to look at it in advance and plan it properly so you never have problems. That's why we call it proactive. Proactive plans. Proactive plans. Okay, so even even the one-off, uh, you know, small business that's just working in in one computer um, needs to understand and maybe have somebody help them out with IT. Very good question. Some people has one computer and do more than like hundred computers. I have a client that have one computer and then they do many many things daily, many transactions, and you know, they're involved with the many soft and uh, the the maintenance, the plan that we have for them is. We spend lots more hours than companies that have like 15, 20 people. Really? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Um, so I, th I think a lot of people are a little scared with like uh, phishing attacks, um, viruses, that, and there's different classes of viruses. Viruses, exactly. Yeah. Ocean, worms, all those things. Yeah. Can you, um, you kind of like break those things down and, and how they sure. differ? 
Um, one of the plans that we have, that uh, we started, it's educational plan that we're starting for the company. What it means is phishing emails, ransomware, even Trojan viruses, many of them is because of uh, lack of uh, education, lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. what, it, what does it mean? You receive an email, uh, or one of your employees receive an email from you, but it's not really you. If you haven't trained them, when you receive an email, you have to check the sender, you have to check a couple of things before you open it, before you put the attachment, yeah. the chance is very high. So education is a very important role in this one. Um, the differences uh, uh, for ransomware and phishing emails, usually these things, uh, these things come through the email or come through the internet. Yeah. Virus and Trojan worms, are, uh, it's like a program. They, they, they run in your computer. Mm -hmm. Ransomware is a program too, but what ransomware does is change all the extensions in your computer, okay. all files extensions. And they request the, uh, the hackers or ransomware people who have created, they request you to give them Bitcoin. If you don't do that, it's gone unless you have a, you had a good back, uh, backup plan and good plan to retrieve it. But yeah. for virus, you, you, there are antiviruses can catch the viruses very well. Mm -hmm. and they can, you can clean it up. So usually, I rather to get virus than ransomware and the other things. Okay. All right. Cool. So um, phishing has a lot of different. All these things just have different spectrums, right? But like sure. like phishing. People are disguising their intention and they're trying to gain information from you, right? And exactly. it's and uh, sometimes it's it's very like low technology um, kind of breach, right? Like very low technology. For example, let me give you an example. We had a client that uh, the CEO of the uh, the company send an email to their purchasing department and say, "Buy us five thousand yep. gift cards from, yes. from Walmart. Scratch it and send it to me." The guy did that and sent all the cards. It was a, a, a five thousand dollar, not five thousand gift cards. So he did that. There is no way you would retrieve it, but um, and that was just a simple phishing email. If you check, if he checked the sender, it wasn't the CEO. It was from ABCEFG at something dot com. Yeah. The guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had actually the same email come in, right? And uh, we're we're a small office. I can see you know basically all my staff by looking out out my door. Sure. And um, my partner, uh, somebody disguised himself as my partner, Bobak, asking for gift cards from, you know, our staff. And, and my staff was like, uh, what, what do you need a gift card for? And, and like, I'm right here. Why, why are you asking me to purchase gift cards for you and your, your clients? This is a very common one. The yeah. other one they do is usually um, they get your information. They go through your email. Even though you have a cloud email, you have a new technology. What they do, they send a program, they go to your email and forward your email to, a, to somewhere that you don't see for, for a specific person. For example, your, one of your clients, um, you, need, they need, you, uh, you need to pay them some money or vice versa, it doesn't matter. Yeah. They, they find out, they forward that email, let's say me, I'm your client, mm -hmm. I will email you. Instead of it goes to your inbox, it goes somewhere else. You don't know, maybe it goes to the draft, it goes somewhere, so you don't pay attention. Yeah. In meanwhile, they get those credentials of yours and then send an email to that client. Can you send, can you send this money to me to this routing and checking account? Yeah. That's a very common one as well. So for money, for these things, you have to educate your team. Also, you have to educate your customers and clients as well. It's very important that you tell them, if you hear something from us, if you request money, this is the procedure we usually do. Yeah. If you see something different than that, please call us to make sure that everything is okay. Yeah, um, in a situation like that, I, I guess you have different phases to um, to the like the process of, of security, right? So, ideally, you deal with prevention and you just stop any of these attacks from happening, right? But then you need good monitoring, right? Because when there's a, when there's a breach, or, or you know, um, how quickly can you react to it and, and limit the amount of damage and the scope of the problem? Very good question. So, to to as you said, there are two things, prevention and monitoring. The prevention, first of all, for emails especially, we recommend for everyone, as your office did, right. uh, the multi-factor authentication. What it means is if someone log into your email outside of your company, it sends a text message to your cell phone, yeah. exactly like bank. So when you do that, the chance when it goes down very low. The other thing is monitoring. That's why we call it managed IT services. For small, medium, big companies, what we do, we just monitor and we see the packet, we see all the emails. Daily, we have someone to check all our clients, make sure everything is looking normal. Yeah. And that's why 
if you do the monitoring very quick, if you do the monitoring, I'm sorry, ongoing, yes, the damage is going to be very low. But if you get it, at the time you get it, the sooner you catch it, the better you can prevent it. So it depends on when you catch it. Let's say they send it to you today and then you catch it tomorrow. We can delete it. We can contact whoever they send an email yeah. and put, the, uh, put more security for your email, for your infrastructure, all those things. Yeah. Multi-factor authentication. Mm -hmm. that, that's that, that thing that everybody's annoyed about, but it's actually keeping a lot more secure. That's exactly right. Yeah. I, I think, um, right, well, right now it's, it, there, it's dealing with your tech, like a, maybe your, um, sorry, your cell phone, you, you're getting a code, or maybe you have a program that's running on there where you accept it with your cell phone. I think in the long run, it'll probably just be mostly biometric. Biometric, like exactly. Like fa face scan. Face scan, all those things. Right now, um, uh, authentication apps came out. Yeah. So some websites, uh, when you log in to those websites, you have to have that app, and they send your code to the app. They don't yeah. even text because they found out sometimes text can, can be, be intercepted hacked. as well. Exactly. Yeah. So those apps are the mo most secure one, and I think they use blockchain. Uh, blockchain is a technology that Bitcoin uses. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah so that's why... It's more secure, and once you get that code, you put it in, you can log in. Yeah. yeah. So um, ransomware is probably one of the things that large organiza organizations are most scared about? Yes. Uh, ransomware, let's talk about it. Ransomware is not a virus. So most of the antivirus cannot get it. But the, the famous antiviruses can recognize it as ransomware. And what they do is it's just a regular file. The recent one is star.lucky. L O C K Y. Mm -hmm. okay. That's the one two of our clients got. But thanks God, we had a very good backup, very good layout, system layout, so we could retrieve everything within three hours, no problem. But the thing is, when ransomware goes to one computer, it doesn't grow fast. It goes very slowly, so you don't you don't know it. It's like it goes slow. It's like a snowball. You go down slowly, and then it gets bigger, bigger, and then it attacks with everything. So what happens is it goes to your computer slowly, goes to your pictures, for example, slowly change the extension then change your music, then go to your C drive, then C for server, attack your server, and change everything. And one day you open, you see everything changed. You cannot open your Excel, PDF, none of them. That means it has a ransomware. There is no program that can fix it or retrieve it. Why? Because this is just, they put the code. Very, very long password for each file. Okay, they encrypt all the files? They encrypt all the files. And yeah. they just they decrypt it, they ask you to pay them Bitcoin. And, uh, for the, and then they send you the process and everything. Yeah. And then once you pay them, police department of Fullerton three years ago, they paid that. Uh, I think twelve thousand dollars. Because there's nothing you can do. They, they had. They didn't have a good backup. Unless you have a good backup, you have a good monitoring system and everything. You usually caught it. Uh, yeah. Beginning phase, beginning medium phase, not the end. And because we have a good backup, three, we usually set up three different layers of backup. One is internally. Mm -hmm. Second one, you take it home. Once a month, you archive, but it's calling archiving back. So you back up the whole thing, take it home. Next month, you bring it in, you back it up, take it home. And the third thing, which is the most important one, incremental in cloud. So every night, it backs up the cloud. So if it attacks today, we we're, we're good till the day before today. So we don't lose that much. Uh, OK, and then like more traditional viruses, Trojans, wor worms, what, what, sure. what are those? Or One more thing about ransomware, be very careful, yeah. especially for the people that are uh, seeing this video. If you connect your uh, backup to your equipment, to your server, if the ransomware goes to your server, it goes to your backup as well. It'll jump into it. Yeah. That's why we have to have a third backup or second backup that is dis always disconnected from the server. Yeah, can it make its way into like a cloud backup as well? It, they, they can go to some of the cloud backups, some of them will catch it. And the way that they catch it, they put a signature on the files, and they see if the file extension change. They ch let's say they check your pictures. They see you have 100 pictures. If they see 20 of them change at the same time, or 10 of them, they put stuff on back. Yeah. So they won't back up the bath file. They keep it with us. Yeah. Um, how about, uh, is, it, is there a possibility to have like a, how do you call it? Uh, there's a technical term for it, but it's like a like a sandbox where like you're 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 attracting people to come in into a controlled environment where where uh, where you're you're monitoring. Uh, yeah, you, there are there are actually a couple techniques that we can talk about. I mean, hopefully it's one a, more time we're going to talk just about ransomware because that's a very very long discussion. And yeah. Very interesting. But as you said, yes, you can. What we do technically, we uh, we uh, we get image of our servers. For servers, we have image. 
For computers recently, we do the same thing. So what it means is, if your server goes down, let's say they attacked your server, mm -hmm. server done, so you don't have a file. In our server, uh, we have, we call it virtualization. So one box, physical box, can have two, three virtual servers on it. Mm -hmm. uh, we have the copy of their image every week. So if the server goes down, we bring the copy, we put it in, done. We wiped out all the ransomware, it's there. Now we're talking about files and programs. Programs mm -hmm. can be installed very quick. And because we have that image, most of the programs is, are in that image, so it comes with it. But for, program, for files, because we have a good backup, cloud backup, archive backup, and connection, if the connection is dead, let's say the one that you connected to the server, ransomware went in and killed it, you have another backup, which is home for the past month, and you have cloud backup till last night. Yeah. So you can retreat it very quickly. Okay. This is the solution that we're doing, and this is the fastest solution so far. So within two to three hours, everything will be up back. Oh, awesome. Okay. And then um, tro Trojans and Worms? What, well, what are Trojans those? and Worms. That's a very good one. Trojans can be dangerous. Uh, cannot, some of them are very harmful. Some of them are not. But simple malware uh, uh, antiviruses, semantic, viper, malware bytes, even the free ver version can crack catch them quickly. Mm -hmm. Unless they're very new and these softwares cannot get it. But most of the times, these softwares will get it very quick. So the difference is vi uh, virus is like same thing that we get. We go and get the flu shot. So antivir virus is always first, then the antivirus comes yeah. with the update for that one. So for example, when you get a flu shot, you're pretty sure you don't get the flu from last year or the ones that from the past. The, the new ones, we don't know anything about it. It may work, it may not. So same thing for virus. So most of the time, antivirus try to be very good. The good ones, as I mentioned, Viper, Symantec, McAfee, all those, um, they update very like daily or uh, every or week, weekly, so they capture them very quick. Yeah. But they're totally different than ransomware. Ransomware is not a virus. It's not something that the antivirus can catch it because it's just a file that changed, it, it, it encrypt your files and change the extension of your files. But virus is a program that runs in your computer and can damage your programs, make it slow, make it slow or damage your hard hardware as well. What they can do, they can uh, shut down your computer, they can kill your hard drive, they can do many things. There were a, a program one of our uh, classmates a long time ago wrote just for the test that if you ran it, the computer was burned. So like technically, physically burned? Physically burned. So oh he my changed the, the power, you know, uh, the power voltage into your computer oh, yes. and your power supply, so you send a lot of power. So these things are possible with like virus or Trojan and all those things. They don't do it usually. They just want to put some damage for for the reason they have. I don't know. Some of them no reason. Some of them some reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, these are the difference. Ransomware technically doesn't consider as virus. It's a totally different. Thing. Like phishing emails, different thing. Yeah. yeah how about um, people actually hacking into your system? Hacking, and, um, it's a that's different. a very good subject. And, uh, I, I, I was a hacker when I was a, no, I was a hacker for fun. Just hacked my friends and all that <laughs> thing. <laughs> I wasn't a serious hacker. I just got lots of people's email address and all those things. And I told them, just yeah. to play with anything. Um, with my good friends. But hacking is just, uh, hacking again, there are ways for network architecture and different things that they can find the ports that opens in your environment. And this is one thing we do. We always scan your environment, yeah. especially should the HIPAA, HIPAA compliance or HIPAA uh, follow the HIPAA compliance rules. Because if you have open ports or open uh, RDP ports, different things. Uh, RDP means remote desktop connection, the, the one that you can come in. Yeah. Then they can come in and capture your information. Another way of hacking is send you an email, you click on it, you, they get your uh, username, password, all the IP address, anything you have in your company. There are many ways uh, to hack, but again, hacking is totally different again than virus, ransomware. Hackers can send you ransomware and virus as well. Right, well once, it, once they're in there, right, they can, they can plant these seeds. Um, or what they, what, can, what they can do, first of all, they have to find a new uh, connection that connect to your environment. Yeah. That's the main thing they have to do. They do it through email, they do it through open ports that you have, many, many things that they trigger and then say, okay, now I found a way to come in. Like, like, like they come to your area, to your office or house and say, oh, this window is not locked properly so we can go in from there. Mm -hmm. Same thing, imagine it like that. 
they see, okay, this port is open, so we can go from this way, from sidewalk, from, you know, from the wall, from, from wherever. They come in, now they can put whatever they want to do. They can put commands in your system, they can run some programs and all those things, and then spread it everywhere. Yeah. Um, you, you touched a little bit on HIPAA, um, so that's, uh, what is that? I mean, it's for obviously physicians, dentists, anybody do, sure. dealing with medical records, right? Exactly. Everyone with medical records and secure information, social security, all those things, they have to follow HIPAA. HIPAA is very important right now as far as technology and as far as the companies, dentists, all, dentists, all those uh, areas, uh, medical. And what it means is you have, to, you have to keep everything secure and you have to follow, follow the steps that they have. Mm -hmm. So what one service that we have or what we offer, we do it for free. We just go to companies, we run, we have a program that run. We give them the, uh, the red pack. We say, okay, these ports are open. Uh, your backup is not, doesn't follow HIPAA compliance. Because when you back up, you have to make sure that your backup, uh, backup is, in, you have encryption. The other thing you have to make sure is even if you use Dropbox in your business, yeah. Dropbox has a HIPAA uh, version as well. You can go sign the HIPAA and then they encrypt the file for you. So if someone hack it, it's encrypted. They cannot see it. There are many, many other things on HIPAA that's very important. But, and um, I would love to do, do it for anyone who needs it. I mean, we do that service. We just go review everything. It's like you know, a like a HIPAA audit. HIPAA audit, exactly. And yeah. we give them like two, three pages of summary reports. If they want detail, we can run the deep detail reports. And then we tell them these are the areas that you have to work or everything is going to go. Yeah. yeah. Uh, one thing that applies to, I guess, all businesses who have employees is keeping the HR files separate and not accept accessible from, you know, uh, the, the operation files, the operating files. Um, very good point. Here. Yeah. Um, one of them is that the other, some stuff, a very, very simple uh, suggestion to everyone right now that, uh, watching this video. That's good. First of all, when you go to lunch, when you go to break, anywhere you go, please lock your computer. You lock very it. simple. What, what it means, it's... If you click on Windows and L on your keyboard for Windows users, yeah. or if you go to the start and click on s not even sign out, lock, it locks. Yeah. And you just put your password goes in. That's very simple. The other thing is you, when you have different departments, like accounting, HR, production, project management, all those things, and you know that they have to be separated. Uh, for example, payroll, put the information in accounting. You don't want any of the employees to see because that's secret information. You, no one wants to see the other one. Uh, the other employees, payroll or something like that. <laughs> you have to define the right security on the server to make sure uh, specific people have access to that. Right. For example, your environment, as we know, we have like owner files, yes. accounting files, or the, the everyone files. We separate them. You know. So then, if they open it, if you open it, you're the only one can see the folders that belongs to you. No, no one else can. These are a very simple uh, rules that you have to do. Every day you go home, make sure you restart your computer. Don't leave it on and say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Uh, these are the very simple things that we, we recommend doing it. The more complicated one is like checking the, the, the routing for internet. means when the internet comes, how does it go through the computers? What ports are open? How is the backup been set up? Is it do you have a backup? If the backup is there, do you put it somewhere that's safe and you lock it? Is it encrypted? All those things. Mm. Yeah. And do you, what, what firewall do you have? That's very important. You need a firewall. And the ones that we recommend usually, we use SonicWall, we use uh, Unified. All those are very good. And you can put it in place. And when the internet comes, it, ha it has a gateway antivirus. It means if something comes in, at the beginning, they capture it and they drop it. So, okay, okay. firewalls... Um it makes it so that there's only authorized access to your server. Is that is that what it does? It's, a firewall is like um, it's like when you come want to come in through the door. Yeah. You have how many locks do you have? And if someone want to try the keys, how secure are, are those locks that cannot be open with those keys? So the firewall. What happened is when you have the firewall with the default gate with the gateway antivirus, anything comes in to your office. Let's say your provider, internet provider, is Cox, AT and T, Verizon, whoever it is. When they send the internet to your office, at the beginning level, it checks all the packets. Internet comes like packets, 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 and right. then it comes in. So if it has any virus, well-known virus, or trojans, all those, it, it get it at that point. So it will drop it. So it, then, if it passed, then your antivirus in the computer 
That's the duty for the antivirus. That's the next one, next exactly. level. Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, for that, you know, the definitely for HIPAA, you need the antivirus as well for each computer. Um, okay. So you have to have something to be secure. Yeah. Um, interesting. What, what, uh, what other, um, so, you know, there, there's a lot of um, quasi cloud computing programs, like, like one of which is like ours that we actually use for, uh, for tax preparation, where there's a, uh, a local um, client or software that's running, and then there's a, a database um, stored somewhere else. Sure. Yeah, so how, how's, uh, how does... How does those work? Um, very good question. Do you have lots of programs like QuickBooks? Very good example, uh, Cloud QuickBooks you can use. Yeah. Your database saved on the cloud, and you can install it on your personal computer and use it, either cloud or local. Yeah. What happened is sync with the cloud, it gets, gets the information. Those definitely follow the HIPAA, but if you write your own software, you have to make sure that you, it's secure and it's good. It has a, uh, good passwords, we follow the rules, all those things. Um, the other thing very important for companies that we, I wanted to bring it up is VPN, Virtual Private Network. Uh, we can set up VPN through the firewall, and what happens is you can connect from anywhere, from home, and work through your office, through your, and connect it to your computer very securely. And uh, you, you're not worried that something transferred from your computer to the office computer, all those things. But um, as far as the cloud programs, um, or SaaS, we call it, like Netflix, you watch it online, it's just what I call SaaS. Software yeah, as a service. Right. Um, office 365 for email, um, G Suite for email again, Google Suite. Many, many software or QuickBooks in cloud. Lacert, they have a, a, the option, I think, AutoCAD, SolidWorks. Depends on the, the uh, field that you work on. But what they do, they, they try to follow the security. Everything is hackable. Everything can get virus and everything can get ransomware. Uh, nothing is 100%. But you can prevent things as much as possible. Got it. OK. and. Um so what what's the difference between you know there are these out of the box softwares like uh, like log me in you could you could download it I, I can I can install it on my computer at work and then I can access it from any other computer you know and yeah. then what what's the difference between that and maybe like setting up a, a true VPN a virtual private network um, log me in and those are very commercial very everyone is using it go to my PC log me in team viewer all those things all of them are very good no problem with that one. VPN has been set up, the, 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 the purpose of VPN is just you connect just your environment very securely. Mm -hmm. And you're the only one that doing it to your computer. I mean, if you want another user, you have to set up another user. With those software, you can install it anywhere, you can connect anywhere, which is no problem. They're secure still, they're very good pro programs. And with VPN, it's one-time cost, and you have to purchase the license one, and then you're set. With those, you have to pay monthly. That's yeah. another difference that you do. But all of them, very good programs. They don't have any problem. Like LogMeIn, we use the uh, TeamViewer, and, but we, we wrote our program. So we use a different program that connects to our clients, very secure, make sure it's just point to point, doesn't go somewhere else, come back, and all those things. Very important. Got it. Um, so no one's, no one's really safe, though, at the end of the day? Um, it's, you should be relaxed. <laughs> and do the best you can do. That's what I'm thinking. It's, it's exactly like uh, in our homes or cars, right. we're safe. We know we're, 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 we should be, uh, we should have peace of mind, and, but we should do the best we can. Uh, we, can we should not say, okay, my house, who cares? I don't want to lock my door. Yeah. No one's going to come, you know, or simple things. Same thing for technology. Technology is more than, because the, the, the houses, cars are very tangible. You see them. But some people hack and they think, oh, it's cool. It's, they don't think it's a, you know, because they don't really see what happened the to the effects. other end. Yeah. The effects, they don't see it. Yeah. And lots of young kids, I, I talk to them right now, they, they tell me, oh, I'm a hacker, I do this. And I tell them, hey, if you do it for fun, even for fun, you do it for two friends and tell them. Because it's not, it's not a fun thing. The other, the other side will suffer a lot. Yeah. You can kill the company. You can, uh, lots of people can be un unemployed because of that. It was a very big company, uh, two months ago, software company around here. I don't uh, bring the name because they called us. It was confidential. Uh, they had 70 people. And uh, we didn't do anything for them at the time. But they called us and say we got ransomware. Yeah. They had to let go 20 people. 
and now they're cleaning everything. Now we put their their backup was on tape. Tape is very old fashioned. Uh, system, but, and any the ransomware went to their tapes, and they didn't have a clean. You know the latest one that they had, everything was corrupted. So they lost three or four months of data, and they, it took them at, right now two months. They still retrieving files. Wow. So yeah, that's um, if you do your the, the tasks or homeworks properly, then yeah. you should not be worried. You're not. You're never going to be hundred percent safe, but that's life. Yeah. You always have to be have peace of mind. Do whatever you can, and then the, this is uh, the best we can do. Great. Awesome. Um, any other topic that you wanted to cover today? Um, we can. We we can we can cover lots of things for backups. I just mentioned it very quick. I just want to bring it up again for backup and servers. The solutions we re uh, recommend always backup. Try to have three different backups. One incremental, which is go to the cloud. One locally, it can be incremental or daily, that in place locally, and one you always need to take it home. So take it home, take it somewhere safe, lock it, keep it, and bring it every month, every other week, something like that. Yeah, that's the recommendation. For servers, make sure you design the server for the things that you need. You may spend a little higher at the beginning, mm -hmm. but that's a good investment. I always recommend. Always say go with. I don't want to bring brands. I usually go with H be honest but uh, the, when you when you invest properly when you uh, do the structural security everything correctly at the beginning you you have that those um, you have the server you have the system for five ten years fifteen years and the problems are minimal if you want to spend less at the beginning because you think you're saving money sometimes you lose a lot more money and then you at the end you're gonna get the server that you didn't want to get at the beginning so it's always good to review, consult with someone knows, yeah, and um, see what are the best options and what does it make sense for me to do. Obviously, everyone has a budget, right? And we are totally understand the budget is very important, as I mentioned at the beginning. But the thing is, with that budget, what's the best you can do? Do you really have that budget, or you just want to minimize it because you think technology? Oh, I don't care about that. Right. So that's very important part, and education. The other thing I want to bring it up. Uh, we we started having uh, seminars. We come to the offices. We start um, every month. We're gonna educate our clients. Means what are out there? What are the best thing they can do uh, for security, for different things, for network architecture, for things that they do daily and be tangible. Not like we don't want to talk about technical that much. We want to talk about something that you feel. If I do it, it's better for me and my business. Yeah. So these are the things we add. Yeah, and if they don't want to use services, definitely have. If they study, if they read five, ten minutes about technology a day, that's perfect. That's a very big help as well. So that's my suggestion. And uh, education, education, incremental changes, consistency, consistency, and planning. And planning. planning. Very big. All right. So, well, thanks, Ara. Right. So, how do people find you? Um, we uh the. Our number is 949-413-7510. Website is www.abccomputech.com. We usually go by Computech, but uh, our website is ABC Computech. Computech has been, we're trying to buy that domain as well, but no, not success yet. Okay. <laughs> and uh, email, they can email support at abccomputech.com or directly to me, arash, A-R-A-S-H, at abccomputech.com. And we're located in Irvine, very close to John Wayne Airport. And they can get the information from the website or call us anytime they want. Awesome. Thank you so much, Thank you, sir. I appreciate, appreciate it for time. having us. Thank you for having me. Done? Okay. How was it? <laughs>